Yo, what is up, Bakery, and welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, we're getting straight to the point. If you're here for the Modern Warfare 3 or Season 1 Warzone settings, you're in the right spot. You'll see them playing right behind me now, and specifically, these are great if you're on mouse and keyboard. I don't go through the controller ones in this video. There are great controller guides out there, but if you don't know me, I am a mouse and keyboard player, a mouse and keyboard competitor, and have made over $130,000 playing Warzone. So that's what we're, you know, focusing on today. Uh, again, if you're just here for those quick settings, go ahead, pause the video when you need it grab those settings before you leave make sure to drop a like and subscribe i really would appreciate it but we're getting straight to the point here you know i, I want to make sure that you guys can get those settings and get playing it's launch day today enjoy the game have some fun if you want more information as to why you're choosing these settings if you want to find your perfect sensitivity or find the graphics that you need to use for your pc or console whatever you're using specifically then stick around let's get into it Okay, so let's find your perfect sensitivity before we look at any of the key binds or anything. Now, if you've already found your perfect sensitivity, whether you've played a different game on mouse or keyboard or whichever, uh, you could skip this portion of the video. We'll have little sections in the video to make it really easy to skip. Um, if you're looking to find your perfect sensitivity or want to know any information on how I do that, this is how I recommend people do it. I've been doing it since Counter-Strike. You can do it in any FPS game, essentially. Go to your weapons, go to your firing range, uh, which will be in the bottom. You just click any of your loadouts. It doesn't have to be any specific gun. And what I tell people is to turn around and find a gun on the wall you see that m4 back there it's the third gun to the left basically what you're going to want to do is leave your crosshair on that move all the way to the right put your crosshair on that and you're want to you're, you're going to want to move left and right while moving forwards and backwards and keep your crosshair on that target now keep in mind it doesn't have to be perfect you can see mine is swaying a little bit as long as it's basically on that target a lot of the times and you feel like you could track something like that while moving forward that kind of stuff um then it's a good sensitivity now what i tell people is my sensitivity is 3.87 I would recommend that you start out on force sensitivity at 800 DPI and then move your way around. Now, if you, whether you need to go up or down, depending on how much death space that you have, that kind of stuff can depend on what sensitivity you'll need to play on. But again, it doesn't have to be right on it. As long as you feel comfortable enough aiming at that and, and moving around with your crosshair on it, uh, where you feel like that's a good sensitivity, you can track something from that target. Uh, now let's get to our key binds. Okay, so starting on the mouse section, we just got the mouse sensitivity sorted. And keep in mind, I am on 3.87, but whichever amount that you found that's good for you is what you should use now again start at 4.0 sensitivity if you're on 800 dpi and work your way up or down depending using that mouse set that i just showed you and you'll find a good one that you like over time it just takes a lot of reps um now going into mouse sensitivity here the only two things that i've changed are the ground vehicle sensitivity multiplier and the air kill streak sensitivity multipliers both set on topino just to make sure it's a lot faster it's double your sins when you're in either those ground vehicles or you're using kill streak so a lot easier there for your ads sensitivity multiplier mine's on 0.85 it should default to one but i recommend that you use from a point Eight five to a point nine. If you don't know what the ADS sensitivity multiplier is, it's very important and it bases right off of your sensitivity. So basically, when you aim down sights, your sensitivity is going to slow by this multiplier. And so it's nice because once you've ADS, you've already basically found your target. You know you're on that target acquisition, and you want to have slower sensitivity so it's easier to track that target and stay on them. Uh, I like point eight five. I would say anywhere from a point eight five to a point nine if you don't already have some kind of basis on that so far. Uh, the same ADS sense multiplier focus on point eight five relative from an ADS sensitivity type and coefficient is 1.33. For all the other ones, everything else is default. I've got this turned off, even though that those are different. Don't worry, just leave that turned off. You won't have to change that. And everything else should be default down below. Okay, so let's get into the key binds here. And keep in mind, since there's so many keys on the keyboard, you'll notice that a lot of stuff is left just default and that's just how it is for the controller there's just not many buttons so that everything has to be used multiple times and changed for the keyboard it's nice you'll use default for a lot of things if you want to change some you can and don't feel like you have to use my settings for these because this is just the stuff that works for me if your hands are bigger or smaller depending some other keys may just feel better so keep that in mind when we're getting into these for move forward all of this stuff just regular move forward w move backwards is s move left is a and move right is d i don't have a walking bind i don't think it's worked in this game auto move forward is h now a lot a lot of people don't know that there is auto move forward in this game you click h you don't have to hold it and it will automatically run for you so if you're you know crawling through a field and want to go use the bathroom but want to keep crawling into the zorm just hit h and you'll just automatically crawl a lot of the times my hand will start falling asleep kind of like carpal tunnel but i don't know what it is exactly my hand starts to fall asleep so i want to like rub it type thing so i'll just hit h it'll run automatically for me i'll rub my hand h is great um or auto move forward rather is great i use h because i don't use that for any other button uh my jump obviously is on space my prone and dive is on left control if your hands are a little bit smaller you may prefer c for this uh as well for crouch and slides on c so you'd have to find a different one for those 
those. Um, but I use left control and C for prone and dive and then crouch and slide. Uh, my sprint is on left shift. My interact is on E. The default bind for that is F. However, I prefer E because I use F to ping while I'm in combat very, very fast. F is a great button to use for that. However, obviously you may like use for F or if you sit in a different game and it's just, you know, that's just regular for you. Then you'll have your E key open to ping if you wanted to do that. Uh, open parachute is space. Don't go into movement advanced key binds. You won't need to go in there. Fire weapon is left click. ADS rather is right click, reload is R. I just had some calamari, so my voice is going insane. Next weapon is two. This will be default bind to your scroll wheel. you okay, listen. This may be controversial. I don't like scroll wheel for changing weapons because it's just all over the place. You could scroll one too many times and pull out the wrong gun and die because of it. You can accidentally scroll your wheel because you're always clicking your mouse buttons. I just don't like it. I use two for next weapon. You could use it if you want. Just know that there are consequences if you do accidentally hit that during combat or something. It's gotten me killed so many times. I don't even know. I don't even know. Two is a great button for that though. Weapon mount. Uh, I use Z. Just use a button that you don't use. If you don't have Z, like if, if you use Z for something else, use T. I think the default button is T. Um, uh, but you could use whatever you want for that. Weapon inspect is I. I don't have a bind for tactical stance. You probably won't need one. Fire mode is B. So if you ever pick up a gun that's on single fire or on burst, click B. It'll change that back to automatic if it has the option. Uh, melee is V. Don't worry about the mouse button. I'll probably just unbind that one. You don't really need the mouse button for that. V is perfect. Lethal equipment is middle mouse button. I really do like lethal equipment being on middle mouse button because you can kind of aim with the lethal that you're throwing. If you hold it down and you're aiming, it, it just feels so fluid instead of clicking a button. You know, a lot of people use Q or E. I just prefer middle mouse button. I think it's nice, especially for throwing knives, uh, which were great in the previous war zone. Uh, tactical equipment is Q. That's a default bind. Field upgrade as well, default bind. My armor plate is four. I think the default bind for that is G. I recommend using one of your one, two, three, four, or five keys for your armor plates just because it's so accessible. I think that G is a, it, it feels like you're playing Twister with your hands. I feel like it's just hard to click. Uh, and you won't have to go through much of else in here, except for your ping, which somehow is unbound. Uh, I'm going to put that on F. Ping is definitely important. Um, none of your other stuff should really change that much. Uh, but ping is great. Now, ping may be on middle mouse button to start with. I think that either E or F your ping is great because you can click that in combat, live mark someone, and it's it's not like you have to do any crazy stuff with your hands to click it very quick. Uh, try F if you haven't, or try E for ping and mark people while you're fighting. That's the use of having it. It's such a good button because F is great real estate on your keyboard. It's a, it's a button that's really close to W. Uh, and so try this for ping if you haven't already or if you have the button free, it's definitely super nice. But there's nothing else in here that you really need to worry about uh, except for your push to talk if you want to set that that should be whatever you want your push to talk to be set to i believe it's default bound to v okay so gameplay is the next one and although this may seem like the hardest tab because a lot of this stuff seems like stuff that you need to read through and you know is it something that you need to know is it not honestly a lot of this stuff i've left myself default and i know a lot of other really good mouse and keyboards players do as well so you can look through here and change some of these if you do just honestly take the ones that i have for now see if they like them if if you do i promise they've been doing me good for three years straight i promise they'll be good for this war zone as well so for crash behavior it's toggle it's like this in a lot of games same with prone behavior and your sprint uh and tactical sprint behavior all on toggle i have my automatic sprint off however some people do use this i think that this is a better bind for controller i don't really recommend this for keyboard and mouse but if you use this and you like it leave it on don't change that because of me i use single tack sprint basically i click my shift once to sprint and then i click it again for my attack sprint uh close back Backpack on sprint i have that on just in case imagine you're going through your inventory you get shot you could sprint basically out of your backpack so that you don't have to play twister all of your keyboard to get out of your backpack and then start running i think this is a great one to leave on and i'm pretty sure that it's default on so just leave it on uh walk i have hold although walking like it's not the same as on controller don't change this one too much unless you already have and you do like it uh this isn't something that you need to change it's on controller walking is more of a thing on this it's either you're walking you're running or you're you're tax printing you know there's not there's not really a big reason to change this to be honest walking isn't that good um automatic airborne mantle just leave this to partial uh same ground mantle and hang just leave to off ground and mantle i have on you could turn this off if you want to i would just leave it on because rarely do i ever see anything wrong with having this on uh slide dive activation i have this on independent which should be standard um slide dive independent or standard okay and now i'm getting confused 
independent not standard i mean it just should be that's the regular one that it's left on i got confused because the next one's standard slide dive is standard that should also be regular parachute on deploy i have that on plane only but for this i'm pretty sure that this is the default setting let's just go ahead and turn that on off i don't think that parachute on deploy is something that you're going to be too worried about it's not something that i'm worried about when you're jumping out of the plane you should you should be the person that's pulling that chute and i'm glad that caught that because i honestly i haven't seen that one yet uh slide cancel sprint i have that on on uh for my movement advanced settings the only thing that you're gonna look through here and find is for your movement advanced settings the sprinting door bash which should already be on make sure you have this on you don't want to be just running into these doors and not breaking them open this is massive and i'm pretty sure a stock thing but i just want to make sure that people have that on that's pretty big um ads mine is just hold change zoom melee focus behavior is hold save for equipment behavior um this is all just stock weapon mount activation i had that on toggle uh off for depleted weapon when i'm out of breath off for depleted ammo weapon switch now this should be on turn that off because for your depleted ammo weapon switch you don't want to just be shooting your gun run out of bullets and then it automatically switch your gun and then you try to switch it and you switch back to the gun that has no bullets and then die because of it turn that off i promise when you run out of bullets switch your guns it's pretty innate it's pretty you know it makes sense when you're in the moment you would be switching that and then you'd switch back to your other gun and then have no bullets uh this is definitely one that you want to turn off for your tactical stance activation ads and melee tactical stance behavior on toggle and armor plate behavior put that on apply all please don't leave that on just singular when you put your armor plates in if you if you're missing three plates for example and you click it once it will apply all three plates that's a big change and you're going to want to have that on uh for your c4 detonation not too worried about it because c4 is not that good for your combat settings i don't think that there's anything in here except for for sprint cancels reload i did see that one earlier uh make sure that that's on that should already be on by default that one's pretty simple if you're reloading and you start sprinting it cancels that reload and it's basically a reload cancel which we do have finally in modern warfare 3 and in warzone season 1 which we didn't have in modern warfare 2 which was just totally terrible um free look activation always enabled long delay behind vehicle and then melee for these not too insane uh and then your danger ping you're not going to have to worry about anything on the bottom here that's all the stuff that you should have for gameplay and a lot of it you should have left the same um unless it's just something that you were already used to just leave it the same because it's just nicest that way uh now let's get into the graphics this one's not going to be as hard i'm basically just going to be walking you through these and telling you what i'm on and even though i'm on a really good pc my settings are built for fps i'm not building this for you know i i don't care about how the grass looks or a building looks i want the most fps and the most chance for me to see my opponent and have like a good visual on them instead of having obstructed vision by trees or stuff like that so that's what these settings are all about if you want your game to look nicer you can turn some of these up especially like texture quality stuff once we get into it but my stuff is all on low basically so this is the first screen display not too much to change on this one you're not gonna have to worry too much here just change your options to how mine are and make sure your custom frame rate is on unlimited for your quality now this is where it gets you know you're gonna have to pause your video most likely through here so let's go ahead and walk it through i'll try to walk it through slow enough to where you can change it as i'm talking uh recommended for graphic preset make sure your render resolution's on 100 or your game's gonna look mad blurry dynamic resolution i have that on on fidelity fx cas for your upscaling sharpening just makes the image look way sharper uh, i mean it makes sense it's called sharpening and then make sure you click show more and then put that all the way up to 100. if your system can't handle that you could turn that back down to default but you should be good to 100. um if you're seeing issues you can obviously turn that back down but 100 seems to be pretty good vram scale target 90 i'm pretty sure that's default vapor rate shading on uh and now let's get into details and textures a lot of these you'll see are either on low or there's some on high that need to be on high so let's go ahead and get there through that now texture resolution low um the next one normal i'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce that depth of field off detail quality level high this is basically just like you can see from the left image you've got not much going on high on the right but your image is it obstructed too too much now you could put this all the way low if you don't have a as good of a system you could turn that low this is something that i would prefer to have on high and it's not something that's going to get in the way too much even though it looks like on this image that you have way more grass on the right i promise this doesn't affect as much in game turn it lower if you have a worse system essentially particle resolution on very low bullet impacts on on persistent effects on on you could turn those both off if your system isn't as good low shader quality on demand texture streaming show more 
it should be default settings uh low for your local texture streaming quality and then for the next session we're in shadow and lighting now we're going to go low off 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 low again all the bare minimums there for that one not anything you need to worry about um it's not going to make your game the fps versus how good it makes your game look it's just not worth it uh tessellation i have that on near terrain memory on max definitely put that on max however if your pc isn't as good you could go through the options i would probably pick medium uh volumetric quality i put that on low deferred physics quality on off uh low and then wave wetness let's go into view here uh field of view is on 120 however if you're new to the game or if you've not used 120 field of view before i would recommend 110 basically 120 makes it look like you can see on this little, little image right here you get way more vision but it also looks like that things are way further away so you know the thing that you get the give is the you know wider vision i could see my left and my right easier but shooting my target from further away or even closer becomes way harder as opposed to like 60 when it's super zoomed in you just can't see as much uh 110 is a pretty good sweet spot if you've never messed with that and if that feels too much and you can't really hit your target as much 100 is pretty good and make your target bigger however your recoil does go up the lower your field of view is um i'm on affected ads i would never wish independent ads on anyone i recommend affected to everyone basically when you aim down your site your fov does not change if you're on independent you you aid down your site and your fov zooms in making it just very odd i played my first 25,000 kills in warzone on independent and i would not recommend it to anyone it was a waste of my time weapon field of view i have on default third person field of view i have on 90 vehicle field of view i have on default the lower ones off off zero make sure you put first cam first person camera movement and third person camera movement both to least you don't want to have all that movement going around you want the least that's 50 percent first person ads for this you're going to want that for your third person ads if there are third person modes which i don't know if there are yet uh spectator camera game perspective this means when you're going to spectate someone you're not looking at that weird camera off the top of the helmet i don't even know why that's in the game and inverted flashbang if you get flashbang i prefer it to be inverted just because it's a little bit easier in the eyes you could turn that off if you do prefer the regular flash uh but that is everything from the graphics Okay, so I know that we said we're only going through the mouse stuff and the quality for today. However, I did have at the beginning of the video every single setting that I have scrolled through. The only last one I wanna hit on, and this is a whole section of a video just for this, so that's how important this is. Go to interface on the left side, uh, scroll down and find I can't find it. Scroll down and find crosshairs, okay? Crosshairs on default is gonna be on. The reason that you do not want this on on is because it, it's very, very sway. Imagine your crosshairs right here and as you turn, you know, this is how a regular crosshair is. You turn and it's just right there. When you have it on on, it's gonna look like this as you turn. It's gonna look like someone's twerking all over your face. It's just not good. Turn that on static, which just means it's gonna stay still. That is definitely what you should leave it on. Please go to interface, put that on static if you do anything this video. That is the end of the settings video. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. And keep in mind, these are day one settings. So these settings could change, you know, further on in the future when, you know, there's other stuff going on, there's other updates, there's other things involved with this FPS and stuff like that. And so these could change, but day one, you're very, very, very safe using these. And these are also ones that I used in the previous Warzone as well. So nothing too crazy there. If you did like the video today, make sure you drop a like or a comment and please consider subscribing and help me out a ton. And I promise the content that we're getting out in the next few days and the next few weeks with warzone one or warzone season one rather is going to be amazing let's freaking get it enjoy the rest of your day go play some warzone and i'll see you in the next one Look at me. Oh, me. I can do shit. i'm gonna like everybody